There's a Bible story that, that really encapsulates this idea very well. There was a man in the Bible named Samson who was very strong and knew his strength and was this person that knew his road and paid attention to the things that were really true for him. And the Philistines couldn't touch him, nobody could touch him, and everybody wondered, where did he get this strength? And so there was a woman that they sent in, a temptress, to find out where Samson's strength came from. And I'd like to invite you to think of those temptresses in your life, the things that get you off track, the things that get you out of your strength, whether it's people that you engage with that aren't, that aren't affirming your strength, or news, or newspapers, or the ways that you get distracted from your strength. Because Samson entertained this temptress. He had dinner with her, he talked with her, he went to bed with her, and as they say in the story, pretty soon he became intoxicated with her. We know that intoxication from earlier in my talk. It doesn't work very well. And he lost his idea of who he was. And so as she's running her fingers through his hair in the evening, he, he, she's saying, Samson, tell me where your strength is. And he's sort of, Delilah, Delilah, he's lost in this intoxication. And finally he says, my strength is in my hair. And so he falls asleep. And the guards come in that night and cut off his hair and because he's given up his strength, they are able to come in and bind him, and they poke out his eyes, and they make him walk around a millstone for the rest of his life. And they're saying that's one of the more uplifting stories in the Old Testament. <laughs> but what happens when we play around in these places where we lose our strength and where we're off our road, we forget who we are, and then we lose our, we lose our vision, and we end up going in circles. And if you've ever been on one of those roundabouts in London, you don't ever get anywhere when you're going around one of those circles. So how do we stay and keep our attention on the things of our life that are true, that are inspirational, that are your road, and we just let it be an exercise? I've heard it described as putting the puppy on a paper. You know, you just keep putting the puppy on the paper and pretty soon the puppy will stay there. So we just practice this. We practice this attention. And finally, the D for destiny. Destiny, and I'll also use it for the word dream, because that's what's in the song. And what do we need for this dream? Well, the last part of the song is, it's a dream that will need all the love you can give every day of your life for as long as you live. And I don't know why this song gets me, <laughs> gets me every time. You know, it's every day, you know, giving yourself that love. You know, do you love your life? Do you honor and cherish the gifts that are you? We're practicing an affirmation in our, in our prosperity class that we say, I love my life. Can we just say that together? I love my life. Yeah, and let's just take a breath into that. Oh, and, and I just hope that feels true for you. And if it doesn't, then you're just gonna journey from where it doesn't feel true to where it does feel true. I love my life. And do you follow and let those things that you love guide you down your road? There's a young lady in our congregation that shared with me this week, she loves riding horses. And she has since she was a kid. And she ended up getting off her track with, with, uh, with job and with family and with motherhood and a lot of things that went on in her life. And, and from pretty soon, the whole thing about loving horses just sort of faded away. And by coming to Unity and coming to a lot of prosperity classes and getting inspired by uh, so many people here and listening to her own inspiration, she, she left a job that really didn't work for her. She was having migraines. She felt like I did in the jail cell and, and Maria did in, in, in the convent. And she let herself stay on this road and, and she is now, uh, in, in partnering with her husband who's gonna support her, gonna go out and uh, take three months and ride a horse and go interview people from her area of Missouri that she loves so much and, and, and be with people and interview people and ride her horse and be with herself. And, and as she's talking about this, I just said, how do you feel when you're talking about this? And she said, I love my life. 
When I think about that, that brings such joy to me. And so it takes a lot of courage to love our life and live our dream. I'll tell you about my destiny and my dream. I, um, I started, I moved here to uh, Kansas City in 2005 from Maui. Um, kind of a wrong turn when I thought about it at first, Maui to Missouri. But, um, but I've loved it here in Kansas City. I've loved it here in the Midwest. And I was going to a program called uh, the Ministerial Education Program, which was a two-year program where I was in school all day. And I missed being part of a church. You know, my journey with Unity had been about 20 years, and I've been part of three centers, this one being one. And I really missed being part of a church. And so in 2006, I started teaching a class here. And by the grace of God in the form of Duke Tufty, um, I ended up coming to work here. And then pretty soon, the in-school program didn't really fit for me anymore. And, and very much like uh, Maria, I, I, felt, I felt just like Maria. In fact, I was always going in late, and the bell was ringing. And, you know, I, I always heard that song, How Do We Solve a Problem Like Maria, in my head. And, you know, everybody's like, you're late, and the bell's off at the convent or whatever. And I just thought, oh. And so I, I kept trying to fit myself into that. But, but I, I wasn't fitting. And uh, when I started working here, I realized that there's another program called field licensing that one can become ordained, and you, you work while you become ordained. You need to be, be a licensed unity teacher, and you need to have some other requirements. But I, I got into that program, and it started in March of 2007, and I, and I left the program of a ministry, and it was all fine. It just didn't fit for me. And so this was a four-year program, and people were saying, Heidi, you only have one year that you could spend out at Unity Village or you can do four years, that doesn't make any sense. And I said, yeah, but it makes sense to me. You know, I want to love my life. And, and Unity Temple is a place that I'm feeling really connected to. And if I had one year to live, I'd want it to be not there, but here. So that started in March of 2007. And on a month from today, March 27th, I'd like to invite you all at 2 p.m. right here in our sanctuary, Sunday, March 27th, as Reverend Duke Tufty ordains me as a unity minister. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's my dream. And your destiny and your dream will unfold if you follow your road. And I will tell you, this has been a long and winding road. Duke always said he wanted to come to my ordination. He just didn't want to come in an urn. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're going to make it another month. But um, so, so I'd like for us to really recognize that, you know, whether you feel like you're climbing a mountain or you're fording a stream or you're following a rainbow, if you stay on your road, you will live your dream. And let's take all this into a period of meditation. <laughs> 